I'm joined now by Ryan Patel. He's a global business executive who's worked for publicly traded companies and startups. And Ryan, uh, talk to us about the significance of this expo. Some say it's an illustration of trade liberalization in China, a sign of strengthening economic cooperation and trade. How do you view it? Well, it's an opportunity, period. If you look at what you just saw, startups and companies wanting to come in and governments, let's, be, let's make that very clear, that are coming to showcase some of the things that they can do, and specifically with China opening their borders for importing. It provides this kind of nice ability for uh, China to create the story of, hey, come here, we are open, and for opportunities for these companies are still coming. I think for me, what was the most important about the expo is that there will be, I think the question that everyone's going to ask is the IP rights, and they will have IP services at the expo with, with other governments. So I think that is key in this conversation as well. You know, it's interesting, uh, in Owen Poland's piece, he was saying they, they own about 5% of the market in China. But in, in many respects, that's hitting the lottery for some of these companies, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's a sizable uh, chunk. Yeah, and I think for me, when you look at these expo, it's not just, you know, five years ago, everyone can say, you know what, China's a great market, I want to be there one day. Expos like this give, gives an actual opportunity for, not, not just to, to expose it to the Chinese market, but investors in China, other markets with government's help. You mentioned the, you had an example of the new New Zealand startup with New Zealand government backing it and making it a little more easier for that startup to distribute its process and be a little more regulated with this brand. I think those kind of things really gives comfortable pieces to companies wanting to come in, especially small ones, where they feel like the opportunity can actually happen. Then, you know, maybe 10 years ago saying, well, it's kind of a needle in hay. Stack. The World Trade Organization and the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development are co-sponsors of this event. Uh, another sign that uh, China really opening up its doors, getting into globalization, while the United States seems to be going in a different direction. What do you make of that? Well, for China specifically, since 1978, right, it's been able eight to nine percent annual growth. They've actually seen seen a big uh, beneficial to it. And as for the U.S., um, you know, Mike, you and I spoke of this in the past. This is a uh, this is a strategy that the administration is is, is kind of digged in and, and, and thinking that there will be a deal with China. You can see that um, the administration got a deal with the U.S. and Mexico, and you know you would think that they would be focused now behind and getting this important deal with China and the U.S. But you know it doesn't slow down what China's doing. They're not you know obviously waiting for the phone call for the U.S. That life goes on, and, and they know they have to be a little more ind independent and, and continue to grow their top, um, their, their GDP. I was looking at the Expo's uh, website, just kind of poking around today, and uh, looking at some of the folks attending, it, it, people from all over the world, a lot of different companies. Um, but there is a large contingent coming from the United States, a number of business interests. Uh, given the strong words from the Trump administration yesterday, uh, Mike Pence with some very strong words about China and this ongoing trade dispute, does any of that surprise you? No, I mean, I, I took a look at it, too. I mean, the majority of them are, are smaller, mid-sized companies. This is the jack part. You, you have to understand, even with the rhetoric that's going, if you're a startup in the U.S. or in, in, in multiple countries and you feel like in your business plan that this is a market that's of its importance, you, you know, you have to place some assumptions on... Do, how do I get into China and still make relations? If, if there is some kind of relationship or no kind of relationship with the U.S.-China, obviously the Chinese government is stating that you can still do business here um, at this point if you are an American company. So, I, like I said, I think that's to the side for the time being. If you're a small company, you have to take every opportunity, especially startups, to get your brand in front of um, in front of any exposure that you can, especially a market with this size. If you think about tech and um, electronics, they've got 1.1 billion people on the mobile mobile uh, broadband. So there's a lot of potential that they can do. And talk to me about some of the themes. Uh, one is inspiring the new vitality of global trade and creating a new pattern of openness and win-win forms on trade and openness. And, and we keep hearing that it's a, it's a closed market. Um, are those messages that China is trying to convey to the world, hey, we're open for business? I think they are. I think the key to this is the win-win. Um, to me, that is what I would focus on, and that has been really clear to many different markets. If you want to come to, into China, um, there has to be a win-win, especially for uh, new new companies. Um, this is an opportunity for China to open and, and, and get its economic leverage. So I don't think that's missed on any of the conversations. You know, when you have a population their size, them and India, for example, you know, there is a numbers game. And when there's a numbers game, you do have some leverage within whoever is coming to sell a product or open for business. So I don't think that's missed anymore on what, what that looks like when you come in. It'll be fascinating to watch. Ryan Patel, thanks so much for your analysis. Appreciate it.